Good morning. I'm Jim Kowaleski. I'm one of the attorneys at O'Donnell Weiss Mate, a law firm with offices in both Pottstown and Phoenixville. We've been serving our clients for over 60 years in, in numerous areas of the law. Today we're actually going to talk about one of those, uh, elder law. I'm joined, with, joined here this morning with Rebecca, by Rebecca Hobbs. Good morning. Rebecca is one of our elder law attorneys here in the offices. Uh, so, Rebecca, why don't you tell me a little bit about what is elder law? Yeah, so elder law really, elder law and special needs planning is really defined by the client that we serve as an elder law attorney. Um, so as an elder law attorney and a special needs planning attorney, the, the clients that I serve primarily are individuals that are over the age of 65 or individuals under the age of 65 that have a disability. So the representation um, that we may present with regard to an elder law client or a special needs client could include an array of varying legal issues. Um, really any kind of issue that those individuals may face as they age or as they live their life, so throughout their life. Um, so examples of some legal issues as an elder law attorney that I would assist a family with or um, assist an individual with would include health and long-term care planning. Um, so that could involve housing, that could involve assisting a family um, with placing a loved one in a nursing home, or helping the individual stay at home if that's appropriate. So helping them find the necessary resources and services that would be available um, to aid the individual and help them stay at home longer, which tends to be a primary goal for a lot of my clients is to age at home. So I'm able to help them kind of connect with the resources in the community um, and know the services that are available. A big part of that health and long-term care planning is also public benefits. Um, so a big part of my practice is assisting families with um, just educating them on the benefits that are out there that are available through Medicaid, um, through Medicare, Social Security, um, and veterans benefits. So that's a big portion of, of the elder law services and also special needs planning. Um, another big issue for elder law attorneys that we help families with is legal capacity planning. Um, so that could be um, planning ahead, which I like clients to do, which is making sure that they have the necessary documents in place, um, such as a power of attorney and a health care power of attorney. Um, but it also can include assisting families with guardianships. Um, so that could be where an individual isn't able to sign a power of attorney document. Maybe they were born with a disability, um, so it's a family with a child that was born with a disability, and then when they turn 18, assisting the family with a guardianship. So that way someone is able to make decisions on behalf of that individual for both financial and health care decisions. Um, but it also can include where um, an adult maybe suffers from a disability later on in life um, or where um, the proper planning wasn't done and now that that person has a progressive disease, maybe dementia, that they can no longer make those decisions for themselves and didn't have a power of attorney. So that would be another area where we would assist a family with a guardianship. Um, another big part of elder law is estate planning. Um, and estate planning could be kind of simple estate planning documents. So I mentioned power of attorney documents, health care, power of attorney, and a living will. Um, it also includes preparing a last will and testament. Um, and it can spread to more complex estate planning documents. So a lot of times we would be looking at trusts, whether it's to plan for complex family dynamics. Every family has different dynamics, and sometimes a trust will help um, plan for potential issues that may arise when mom or dad pass away. Um, we can also do trusts for, for sheltering assets, whether that's for tax purposes um, or for Medicaid, um, to plan ahead and make sure that we're protecting mom and dad's money and spreading it out for the cost of their long-term care. So along with the estate planning and kind of planning during life, elder law also includes the administration of estates and trusts when an individual passes away. Um, so it could be administration of you know, simple wills, um, administration of more complex trusts, and it also can include administration of special needs trusts once they've been funded. So elder law really is this wide range of all these varying legal issues that affect individuals that are over the age of 65 
um, but also individuals that are under 65 that have a disability. That's great, Rebecca. Thank you. And as you were talking about it, a lot of people that I speak to about elder law, they think it's a specific incident or something very uh, finite that is what is elder law does. And it sounds like it's much more of a journey that you can help them on uh, throughout their, once they are 65 or they have a disability, there's many points where you can help, you can advise them to make sure they're doing the right things, which is great. And I, particularly you, you're, you, you are uh, especially, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It escapes me. You are uh, particularly qualified for this because of the fact that you are a certified elder law attorney. And can you tell me a little bit about what that is? Because it sounds yeah, amazing. Definitely. So a certified elder law attorney, um, it's also abbreviated as a CELA. Um, and what that means is it's a certification um, that is administered through the National Elder Law Foundation. And it's approved by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court as a certification program. Um, so it really is the gold standard um, for elder law attorneys and special needs planning attorneys. And if you have this certification, you can hold yourself out as specializing in the area of elder law and special needs planning. So it's one of the few areas of the law um, that attorneys can specialize in. And the certification program, um, in order to obtain that CELA designation, there are an array of requirements that you have to meet. Um, so you know if you're hiring an attorney that has that CELA designation, you know you're hiring somebody that has met those requirements. Um, some of the requirements for this certification um, include having practiced for at least five years, um, and three of those years have to be specifically in the field of elder law and special needs planning. Um, and you actually have to demonstrate. So when we talked about what the definition of elder law is and all the legal issues that an elder law attorney may assist a client with, um, in order to obtain that certification, you have to demonstrate that you have handled cases in each of those areas. Um, and so it kind of makes sure that the attorney has a broad experience in all the varying issues that could affect um, individuals with disabilities and individuals as they age. So along with the, the experience requirement um, and the requirement that you have practiced in each of these areas, you also have to pass a day-long exam that's specifically testing on your knowledge with regard to these areas. Um, and in the past, the pass rate has been as low as 50%, so it's a hard test. Um, and once you pass that test, then you also have to undergo um, a peer review where other attorneys that also practice elder law um, review you and um, recommend whether you should be certified as the elder law attorney. Um, so once you've met all those requirements, then there's ongoing requirements to maintain that designation. So you have to continue to practice in all the varying elder law areas that we discussed in the beginning um, and also continue your education with what we call CLE, so continuing legal education credits, um, specifically in the area of elder law. So in your experience, Rebecca, is every elder law attorney that holds themselves out as uh, providing elder law guidance, are they CELAs or is that a, a designation pretty limited? That designation is pretty limited, so it's important that if you're looking to hire an elder law attorney, um, that's something that you want to specifically look for. Um, and there is a website called NALA, which is the National Academy of Elder Law Attorneys, where you can search specifically for elder law attorneys in your area that have that CELA designation. Great. One last thing, because we're getting close on time. Uh, when should, in your mind, when should clients come to you? When should they approach you to talk about some of the issues that they're facing? Yeah, so really when we're talking about elder law and we're kind of discussing special needs planning as well as specifically elder law issues, the key is to plan ahead. So um, I think a good age to begin thinking about elder law issues is right around the age of retirement um, is when you can, should start planning. Um, a lot of times, though, people don't, you know, life gets in the way, things happen. Um, so it's important to know that, you know, if there is a crisis, um, so for example, someone in, in the family um, needs to enter the nursing home and you kind of need assistance with benefits quickly, um, that we can jump in and help in those situations as well. But planning ahead is key um, to a lot of the, the planning techniques that we can use for elder law. 
Well, thank you very much, Rebecca. That's a lot of great information about elder law, what you can do as a CELA for your clients. So I greatly appreciate it. Again, I'm Jim Kovaleski, joined by Rebecca Hobbs for the law offices of Donna Weiss-Mate with offices in both Pottstown and Phoenixville.